What's going on guys, Christian here, and today I'm gonna to be bringing you guys a video on how to get 12 volts switched power on your Tesla Model 3. So in this video, I'm gonna be hooking up my footwell lighting since I have a standard range plus. Um, this will work on the non-standard range plus in case you have accessories such as a radar detector or any other accessories that run off 12 volt power that you wanna hook up to your car. This will work great. Actually wasn't all that difficult to do. Um, I did it in one night, maybe took a few hours to work on, and I got it through. Um, if you're following this video, it might actually be a little quicker since I was trying to piece together a whole bunch of forums when I did it. Um, and this is going to be a pretty direct video, so you won't have to do any guesswork. So you are going to need a few items. So I used a 16 gauge wire to run from the 12 volt power to the relay switch that I have wired up. Um, if you're only going to be lighting the... Uh, LED lights you probably could get away with the 18 gauge wire But I wanted to upsize it to 16 gauge just in case I decided I wanted to add anything else in the future At least then I would have that capacity to add it without overloading the wiring And then you're also going to need to get some wire t-taps to tap into the existing power of the car and then run it to the relay And then obviously you are going to need a relay as well I'm gonna have all these items linked down in the description of what exactly I used And then you're also going to need electrical tape and some just other general electric tools or screwdrivers to pop things off so Without further ado, we are going to hop right into it and get started. Alright guys, so then the first thing that you're going to go ahead and do is get your center console trim popped off. So to do that, you're going to start in the back here, so open up your center console, and then go ahead and start pulling right here. So you can go ahead and pull that, and then just keep pulling, and you can either use a pry tool or your hands, and you'll see there's these metal clips that lock in. So you're going to just go ahead and try to pull those and just keep popping 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 until you get up to this end here and then once you get here you're going to go ahead and really just kind of stick your hand up in here make sure you get these end clips out and then once you do that do that on the other side like i have done and then from there you're going to go ahead and reach on both sides once you get both sides done grab here and pull out and up and the whole thing is just going to kind of pull out then once you do that you can just kind of fold it off to the side like i did here if you really want to, you can pull that clip out and actually just kind of get rid of it. So then the next step is actually going to be pulling off the trim in here. So we're going to go ahead and pull out these screws and take off these side panels. And then we'll be able to pry off this and access our 12 volt power from behind. So this here is actually going to use a Torx 20. So go ahead and put your Torx 20 bit on and then you can go ahead and just take all of these screws out along here and then it'll just come out nice and easy. Then once you get all of those removed, you can go ahead and start pulling this away on both sides, starting at this end, work your way this way until this is all loose, and then you can pop it all out, and then it'll just come loose and come right off like that. So then once you get to this point, you are gonna go ahead and open up your center console, and you'll find this little black piece here, and you're just gonna wanna pry it open. I use the screwdriver, you have to be a little careful so you don't scratch anything if you use that, or you can use a plastic pry tool. And then once you do that, you can see there is a T10 uh, screw in there. So you're just gonna go ahead and unscrew that. And then once we do that, we're gonna stick a pry tool underneath here and just pry off this piece. So you're just gonna go ahead and pry that up and then this whole piece will just come up and then you'll be able to unclip it down there and take that off and you can see our 12 volt power source is there that we're gonna be tapping into. So I'm gonna go ahead and unplug this and then we're gonna tap into that and go from there. So now that we got that open, we're also gonna need to access under here so that we can actually run our wires. So to do that, we're gonna go ahead and pull down this passenger trim. So to do that, you're gonna go under here and you're gonna find these plastic clips. So there's one here, there's one here, and there's one here. And you're just gonna go ahead and use a pry tool, or I just use my fingers and just kind of pull it like this. Get it like that, do that to all three. And then once you do that, you should be able to just kind of give it a tug Starting from the front, go ahead and start to pull, and you'll see it'll all start to pull down. Carefully, you don't lose these clips, you are going to need them to put it back up. So you could just go ahead and keep pulling. 
and then it all just kind of slides forward. Then once you're under here, you're going to see there's two cords to disconnect, so you can disconnect the speaker wire as well as the light wire, and then we can get this piece of trim out of the way. Now once you go ahead and get that out of the way, the next thing we're going to remove is this uh, carpet trim piece here. So the easiest way to do that is actually reach your hand up in this area here, go ahead and grab that and just start giving it a pull, and it'll all just kind of start peeling away. So I'm going to need a second hand to do this, but you just kind of keep pulling, pulling, pulling all the way to this point and just pull straight out and then that'll come loose. Just like that, that'll all pull out. Now one thing you do want to note is these white tabs right here don't always come off. So as you can see, this one's missing it. Those are actually still in here. So as you can see here, you're just going to want to pull those out, but you do have to be careful they don't fall back. So you, you might want to use two hands for that just to make sure that you get them out safely. And then you'll just go ahead and slip them on here. And then you can put this away for storage until it's ready to go back on. Now again, on the driver's side, we're going to want to go ahead and remove these panels. So underneath here, you're going to find two screws that need to be removed. One is right up here. And then the other one is right up here. And then there's also some plastic tabs that we're also going to need to pop out. So you're going to go ahead and pop that out. And then we're going to start pulling the panels down. The other tab is right over here. So then the final thing you're going to need to open up to route wires is get this cup holder out so that we can get access to underneath. So to do that, there's four screws here. One, two, three, four. You're going to go ahead and unscrew all of those. And then give it a nice tug. There's two clips underneath here that are going to need to pop. So you'll just give that a pull, and then once those screws are out, you can go ahead and give that a pull, and it will come out. So you're going to want to unplug this and your LED light down here, and then that whole fixture will come out, and we can get access to run wires through underneath to down here. Alright guys, so then once we get everything opened up, we can go ahead and run the wires. So up here we're going to have two wires that need to get fished through. We are going to need a power wire, so we're going to get a ground and a 12 volt, 12 volt power source from that. And that's going to go right to our cigarette lighter, 12 volt power supply. And then we are also going to have a secondary wire that's going to come up through, and then I drilled a little hole through here so that the wire comes through. And then we, I'm just tucking it right down through here. And that's going to be our signal wire that's going to connect to the brown wire there. Then that's all going to fish down through, so you can fish it down through this hole here to the right. You'll see where these wires go. It's kind of difficult to do, so you're just going to have to kind of push a bunch of wire down. And then eventually I saw a little bit of red wire show up right here. So right there you're going to get that and then fish it through, continue it down this way. And then my relay is going to get mounted back in here. So then that wire is going to come up this way. And then here on your relay it's going to get powered up as follows. So this here is going to be your signal wire. That wire is going to be the one that's running to the brown wire in the back. This one is your ground wire. That's going to be the ground coming off of the 12 volt power supply. And then the positive 12 volt coming from that's going to run into this block here. And then our actual 12 volt power source for whatever you decide to power is going to get powered off of this one here. Uh, if you have a different relay, it might be slightly different in the way it looks, but they should all wire up the same way. And then once we get that all done, then you can go ahead and tap your power off of um, your sources. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. So then additionally for my install, I actually drilled a little hole in the passenger side footwell kick panel so that I could put this switch and then we're gonna wire that up so that I can turn my lights on and off manually in case I don't want them on. So we're gonna go ahead and wire that all up now and see how it looks. So then to power up the light on the driver's side, you're just gonna go ahead and pull your power wire in through this crease and then I ran it underneath the carpet here so that it doesn't get tangled up in my gas pedal or brake pedal while I'm driving. So it's running all underneath the carpet here and then I have it coming out here and then we're going to take the white wire and we're going to splice it into the red wire on here and then plug it into the light. On the passenger side, you're going to splice it into a light gray wire. So it's a red wire on the driver's side and a light gray wire on the passenger side. So go ahead and get those spliced together and then we'll be able to plug in the lights and then we'll get everything powered up. All right guys, so then the final step is just going to be to tap all your power 
So here you can see I used the wiretaps and just connected right into that power there. And then that's running down through here along with the switch power coming from the brown wire back in here that I have tapped. And then it's all coming down through here, running into the relay like I showed before. And then that power comes out and into this switch in and then out. Um, it has a third prong in case you wanted it's a lit up switch, but I don't care about the light since it's hidden. So I didn't use that third prong. Then that wire comes off and then I have it spliced here where it splices off into two. And then the first wire comes over to the passenger side, splices into that gray wire. And then the other one follows over to the driver's side as shown in the other video. And it then splices into the red wire on the driver's side. And then all you gotta do is flip on your power here. And you can see we now have foot low lighting. So now all that's left to do is just go ahead and reinstall all of the trim pieces basically just work backwards from the beginning of this video and you can get the whole car back together and you're good to go. So if this video is helpful for you, please smash that like button down below and consider subscribing. It's really gonna help me out a lot. And if you know anyone else who wants to do this, make sure you share my video with them so that they can figure it out and get it done.